So hello my friends, Devon Lennox here, Photography P. In today's video, I want to talk about the angle of view versus the field of view debate. Note you can find timestamps in the description down below. You can also scrub through the video to skip to a more relevant section if you'd like. Also note the accompanying blog post for this video linked down below has several helpful visuals to explain these concepts. So check it out if you'd like some more specific examples. But with that said, let's get started. When shopping around for a new lens, most photographers focus on the lens focal length. But what exactly is focal length? And how does it relate to angle of view? Also, how does angle of view differ from field of view? And more importantly, why does this all matter? And how does this affect our final photos? Great questions. Let's first start this discussion by defining focal length. Note, I will be posting a follow-up video specifically about this that will be far more detailed. So check that out if you don't know what focal length is already. But for this video, let's keep it short. Focal length, usually expressed in millimeters, describes the point of convergence onto the camera sensor. This point is also called the nodal point, and it's where all the light rays come into the lens together and form a sharp in-focus image. And unlike what many photographers think, this particular term has nothing to do with the physical length of the lens. It's actually a function of its internal optical design only. That said, what is angle of view? There are many definitions, but the most common one is that angle of view describes how much of a scene a lens captures onto the sensor. And we measure this value in degrees. Camera manufacturers can calculate angle of view in several ways. These include using the horizontal width, vertical height, or the diagonal. However, most manufacturers will specify angle of view by measuring the diagonal of the image, and it's calculated using a combination of focal length and the camera sensor size. If you're curious in the blog post for this video, I've included common diagonal angle of view values and how they translate across various sensor sizes. I've also included the formula to calculate angle of view if you want to calculate it yourself. But quick commercial break. Did you know Photography PX launched a sister company called PXPresets.com? Well, if you didn't, PXPresets.com is going to be your next one-stop shop for Adobe Lightroom desktop and mobile presets. On PX Presets, you can find a large selection of presets to shortcut the process of getting high quality images and consistent branding across your imagery. We have a large selection of styles that are well suited for food, products, portraiture, fashion, beauty, and much more. We're also running a special right now for our mega collection. So if you want to upgrade your entire workflow in one fell swoop, now's a great opportunity. So if you're in the market for some high quality Lightroom presets to shortcut your workflow, feel free to check out pxpresets.com. With that said, back to the video. Okay, so what does angle of view actually mean? Angle of view tells us photographers how much of the scene ahead a lens will capture, or put another way, does the lens have a wide view or a narrow view? Nothing more, nothing less. Okay, so now what is field of view? This definition also varies a bit, but the most standard one is that field of view is the calculated field size, meaning how large the subject appears in the frame of your photo. And this specific calculation is based on your focal length, sensor size, and it also includes a dimensional variable that is known. This dimensional variable is basically a reference point for this calculation, and it's usually something like the subject or background distance from the lens, but it can be any point. There's no specific requirement here. That said, calculating field of view requires an accurate focal length measurement and the true dimensions of your camera's sensor. It's also essential to know the lens's nodal point as that affects the final value. The problem is only lens manufacturers know these measurements since they're the ones that create this using computer simulations. So for us photographers, this calculation is only a starting point. It's not accurate, so keep that in mind. But with the definitions covered, how does angle of view and field of view differ? Well, the basic answer is that angle of view, unlike field of view, is independent of distance, and there's no need to have a specific distance to the subject or the background from the lens. Instead, angle of view is uniform at all distances, and as far as I can tell, this is why it's the standard measurement in the camera industry. It could easily be the case that lens manufacturers could use field of view and add a set distance that they could standardize, say 10 meters away for their specifications, but that isn't 
isn't the case. And instead, they all use angle of view. So really, I believe when most photographers in our industry describe a field of view in photography, say in a video course or on a YouTube video, they're actually describing angle of view and this is merely a case of confusion. Now, there is a good reason to understand angle of view though, and I want to highlight an essential relationship between focal length and angle of view. In this case, the focal length that you use changes the angle of view, which then changes the image magnification the lens produces. Short focal lengths like those below 35 millimeter capture more of the scene ahead since they have a larger angle of view, but they also have a lower image magnification ratio, while longer focal lengths like those above 70 millimeters capture a much more narrow view of the scene ahead. As a result, they have a higher image magnification ratio. If you're unfamiliar with the term image magnification, it describes the relative size of individual elements in the foreground compared to those in the background. Many photographers also refer to this term as lens compression. And it works like this. A telephoto lens has a larger magnification ratio, which means it requires you to be further away to fill the frame with an average size subject. But since you're further away, the relative distance between the subject and background actually shrinks, which effectively enlarges the subject itself. In contrast, wide angle lenses having lower image magnification ratios force you to get closer to the subject to fill the frame. Doing so emphasizes the difference between them and the background, making the background look further away, and it emphasizes the relative distance of objects. Okay, so why does this all matter? Ultimately, these definitions help photographers select the right lens. Of course, many of us usually select a lens based on focal length alone, but what we're really choosing here is a specific angle of view, and the angle of view is the important thing here as it genuinely determines our framing. For example, a large angle of view is perfect for landscapes and astrophotography, but not so great to capture distant wildlife and fine detail. Knowing this information beforehand is key, otherwise you'll run into difficulties when framing and composing your images, like not being able to zoom out wide enough or being too zoomed in and close. Of course, you can also physically move to the subject and create a tighter frame or move away to create a wider frame, but that's not always possible. And it doesn't also produce the same effect as changing the angle of view itself. But besides that though, this debate is mostly technical jargon that's usually hidden amongst most forums. And while insightful, it's fair to say that most photographers could really care less about mathematics. The only thing that's really important here is that we have a large enough angle of view to capture what's important in our frame. And ultimately, can we get the shot that we want? So for what it's worth, I think selecting lenses based on focal length alone is easier than thinking about angle of view, but we're really picking lenses because of their angle of view, not necessarily their focal length, just my two cents. Thank you for watching today's video. I hope you found the content of it valuable, insightful, and you learned something meaningful here. If you're new to our channel, please consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. If you have any comments, questions, or feel like I've overlooked something in the course of the video, please let me know down below. I've been your host, Devon Lennox, Photography P. dot com.